So let's start it. Uh, good morning, my name is uh, Daniel Jaff. I'm working for uh, Deutsche Telekom, uh, that's the uh, biggest telco provider in Germany. Um, and I'm giving today a talk about uh, building a very high available cloud and uh, together with Ceph and OpenStack and um, give you an insight into um, the um, failures that could happen uh, if you set it up and how you mitigate it. So a short overview. Um, first, I will speak about what uh, the motivation for this talk was. And then we spe I speak about uh, availability and uh, server level agreements, um, about data centers. Uh, after that, about uh, OpenStack and Ceph, explaining the architecture, the HA setup, um, and some other interesting topics. And after that, the main question of this talk, if uh, OpenStack and uh, Ceph can work in a HA setup together. Um, so the motivation for this talk is uh, Deutsche Telekom is building an uh, NFV cloud um, um, based on uh, OpenStack, KBM and Ceph. So uh, we have uh, a data center design um, out of two types of data centers. Uh, one are the back-end data centers in the setup. There are only a few of these as a classical um, data center with high availability. Um, usually they have two cores, meaning two buildings uh, or two, two fire compartments. Uh, and they have a high uh, server level agreement for infrastructure and service. Um, and we host their um, special services and uh, have all private and customer data there. And then we have a lot of um, front end data centers spread over the uh, countries uh, in Europe and Germany. Uh, they are very small, only a few racks. Um, they are very near to the customer and hosting service that uh, should be there. They have a lower SLA um, and we host their uh, NFV applications. Uh, let's talk about, speak about availability. Um, usually um, availability is uh, measured relative to 100% uh, of the operational time you expect. So um, you all know these uh, uh, nines um, from uh, three nines to, in this case, six nines. Um, what we are usually aiming for is something between four and five nines. Um, as you can imagine, it uh, would be really hard um, if uh, a telco service, a core service, your phone is failing uh, that often. So. Um, this talk is a um, mostly about the five nines in this case. Um, you would have then something around five minutes a year, uh, a failure, but yeah, we, we would like to be better than that. So what is high ability? Um, uh, that is usually the um, consti uh, consistent availability of the uh, system you build. Um, in case of a failure, and, and um, with a failure I mean hardware, infrastructure, it could also be software. So um, which availability is the uh, most interesting for us? So it's, you have the availability of the server, you have the availability of the network, um, the availability of the data center and of the cloud you build. And for us, um, the most interesting, since we don't uh, host a, pr a public cloud, we host a private cloud for our services, um, is for sure the end-to-end -end availability, uh, so the ability of the service to the customer. Um, yeah, the calculation of uh, this uh, ability is quite complex. Um, it includes a lot of components, and each of these components is contributing to the overall ability of the services. So that is uh, the infrastructure we built, um, the hardware, the software, the processes we have, all that contributes to it. Um, and um, the, it's also influenced of the likelihood of a disaster or, or the failure scenarios we have. That's very complex. I don't want to go in details because that would, is not the um, main topic of the talk. Um, and usually, um, depending on the SLAs you agree with your um, customer, um, the, for example, the planned uh, maintenance time is maybe excluded from that. So it could be more t downtime than uh, you may expect, but in our case, we, um, yeah, we don't have, we ho hope to have no influence of the maintenance process. 
Um, yeah, let's come to the data centers. Um, usually you have some failure scenarios with data centers. Um, one could be for sure the power outage. Um, that means external and internal, um, so uh, the incoming power and also the distribution over inside the data center could be uh, broken and also the backup UPS or uh, diesel generator could fail and um, would be a problem. So the other side is for sure the network. Um, that's one of the most important for us. Um, um, that means external connectivity and also the inside, uh, so failing misconfiguration, uh, cables, switches, router switches, uh, everything um, related to that, and for sure the failure of a server. Um, we consider it in a highly distributed uh, HA setup as not a problem. The uh, problem, the failure of a server shouldn't affect us, and yeah, on the other side, for sure the uh, failure of a software service. Um, as you all know, human error is still the um, often leading cause of outage. Um, there are issues like misconfigurations uh, of the network or other software services, uh, accidents like the, some guy is pushing the emergency power off button by accident because the uh, button was not protected, um, or somebody is cutting cables or the usual, uh, the, the all-known epic failure from the switch uh, where you put in the, uh, the network cable and resetting the switch, right? Um, all that could happen. Um, and yeah, also um, the case of a disaster is, uh, of an external disaster is part of the calculation. Um, that would be issues like uh, a fire or an earthquake or even part of the calculation usually is uh, how near the data center is to an airport and if an airplane could crash into it and also unfortunately also calculations like uh, how near is the next uh, power plant, the nuclear power plant. So. Um, you probably know the um, classification for the data center tiers from the uh, Uptime Institute. Um, usually, um, or what we are using is something between uh, tier three and four. Um, meaning that parts of the tier four uh, requirements are part of the tier three uh, data centers. Um, under that, uh, it's not uh, that interesting, but at you, as you can see, even with a tier uh, four data center, you don't get uh, five nines. So um, that is something at the end you need to do on the software level or through uh, different ways. So. Um, how do you mitigate such cases? Um, yeah, the first one is uh, find your single point of failure, right? Um, and you have usually a lot of redundant uh, components, that meaning power, network, um, server, services, everything should be redundant. Um, and it includes a very careful planning um, related to network uh, design and power management, but also to topics like fire suppression and um, processes that are in place if something happens, um, or all the disaster management and monitoring. So as I already said, um, usually the reason why we don't use um, tier four data centers are they are much expensive, much too expensive for our, the usually work case. And it's probably not worth the money to uh, run a tier four data center uh, if you can do it on other way. Um, so. Our um, idea is to use, uh, instead of that, an HA concept on the cloud and application level to solve the problem. So one example, um, what we do in our data center only as an example is uh, we new, uh, use a spin, uh, spine leaf architecture on our uh, internal uh, network, meaning that we have redundant uh, uh, leaf switches and also uh, management switches uh, separated from the normal traffic um, and have um, the, the spine and the DCR, uh, the data center router switches, uh, redundant. And also each, each server has some redundant heads, multiple uh, redundant NICs and uh, redundant power lines and supplies. That's yeah, the usual way. So let's come to Ceph and OpenStack. Um, you have seen this. Uh, a slide for sure more than once. Um, the self architecture 
is built on radars. Um, you uh, have um, three main components. Um, uh, one is RBD, radar block device. Um, the other one is the uh, radar gateway providing um, object store. And uh, it's FFS, but um, uh, we, for example, don't use it uh, because it's not production already, right? And um, what's most interesting in the, all the discussion is the Rados block device. So um, CEF consists usually, in this case, uh, if we only take a look on the Rados block device uh, out of OSDs in general, the, um, um, the storage device demands uh, for CEF, you have a lot of them, and uh, usually it's one per drive, uh, one OSD. And it stores the object uh, on the disk and um, handle all the replication and recovery. Um, the other important part is uh, the monitors uh, used in the system. They maintain the, all the membership states and um, also the crush map. And uh, they need to have a Chrome. Um, they build it through a Paxos protocol. And um, they are very small and lightweight. And usually, you should use an odd number of them. So where come Ceph and OpenStack together? Um, these are um, the cases. Uh, OpenStack um, projects that are using Ceph uh, or Ceph parts that are using OpenStack is uh, one is the Rados Gateway for Object Store, uh, Cinder Glance for sure, um, and at the end Nova to host uh, the file system for, for uh, DVMs. Um, and other, there's also Manila um, using Ceph, for example, um, with CephFS or uh, RS block devices. So which components need to be HA, right? Um, it's uh, on one side the control plane um, of your cloud. All you need for provisioning, management, uh, all the API endpoints from the different OpenStack services. Um, the admin node, if you have one in your concept, or the control nodes, and on the other hand, uh, the data plane with uh, yeah, network and sto um, storage. Um, you have a different type of um, uh, services in your um, cloud. One are the stateless services. They're these are these services where no dependency between calls is. Um, so if you send a, rep uh, a request and you get a reply after that, there's no attention required by the service anymore. Um, these are usually the API endpoints um, or the Nova scheduler. Um, and you have, on the other hand, the stateful services like uh, database or RabbitMQ, where an action um, Usually, um, a, a subsequent call of an action uh, depends on a former call. So uh, you have a state, and uh, you need to make sure that you don't lose this state. Um, how do you handle an HA setup? You have, in general, two concepts. One is active-active, and the other one is uh, active-passive. Uh, so stateless services are the most easy to handle, because you simply not, uh, need load balancing, for example, through HA proxy uh, for both concepts. And in the active passes case, you bring for a stateful service usually simply a new instance up. Um, the, the active one failed, and you bring a new one up. Um, and on active, ad, active, you have redundant services uh, running at the same time, and all of them sync between the states uh, on themselves. That would be a simple picture of how you m probably would set up your HA setup on the OpenStack side. Um, you would have two nodes or more nodes um, and um, would dis distribute uh, instances of the uh, services you want to have in an H setup and uh, would have a uh, virtual IP and handle the over uh, HA proxy the access to these nodes. Um, and underneath, you have the setup for your SQL database or, uh, or also the RabbitMQ queue, for example. So the most interesting part of my uh, talk or the, the, the core topic is, is Quorum. Um, usually, um, if you have a cluster um, and have an HA setup, you have components, they have a membership in the cluster, and you need to decide which one is the 
is the leading part of this um, and to, to prevent the uh, data and uh, service corruption. Um, examples here are, for example, the usually uh, the SQL Galera setup um, using uh, Quorum or MongoDB or CassandraDB. Um, on the other hand, also pacemaker coursing uh, using or build, uh, building up Quorums. And related to Ceph, you have the Ceph monitors that build a Quorum uh, through the Praxis protocol. Um, you should have, uh, as I already said, an odd number of uh, monitors um, and at least three in an HA setup, right? Uh, one uh, is not enough. Um, and um, what happens if you lose the quorum on Ceph? Yeah, it's, uh, you have no chance anymore to um, handle cluster membership um, of the components like adding new mods or new uh, OSDs but also the clients can't connect anymore uh, since they don't get uh, information uh, where they should get the data. So the good big question is, is OpenStack and Ceph together um, HA ready? Um, for this, um, I assume that you have an HA setup that has no single point of failure on your OpenStack side. Um, and for sure, the uh, Ceph um, setup in general is HA ready if you have enough months. Um, and there is no single point of failure um, in the Ceph setup. Um, and the assumption here is that the availability of the Rados block devices is really critical for your cloud. So you host your uh, VMs directly on RBD. Um, if that's not the case, the talk makes no sense for you. So. Um, on the other hand, uh, the availability of the Rados, block, uh, Rados gateway uh, uh, I would classify as not that critical because it's an, a gateway like an API endpoint. You can simply load balance it and distribute it. So that would be um, very simple and would be out of scope here. Yeah. Um, so what happens on if you take a higher look on the HA setup, if you distribute your cloud over a data center with multiple cores or with two cores or two fire compartments, uh, what is happening if one of these uh, cores is really failing? Or if you have uh, some uh, disasters or failures like misconfigured network or lost network connection between, between these both those cores or also the uh, case where you lose power for one of these cores or fire compartments. Uh, and then it's getting really interesting. Um, to explain how uh, what's happening, um, I take this simple picture. Um, on top, you have you, your HA cluster set up. Um, and the, the second part are the compute nodes, in, in this case, um, using the RBDs. And underneath, uh, the Ceph cluster. And we have, f for this case, two rooms. Uh, I call them, in this case, fire compartments, but it doesn't matter if you have fire compartments or you have a, a core, a physical core in your data center like a building or so. The first case um, is for sure that the one side is simply failing, you power is off. Um, in this case, um, um, in this special case where you have the side failing with the less um, Ceph mons, everything should work at least on the other side. Um, the HA setup is switching over the uh, OpenStack side and Ceph is also deciding that one side is still running and um, the uh, file compartment B in this case uh, would simply uh, work. That's somehow, yeah, let's say the best case scenario. And yeah, what happens if the site with the more, more monitors is failing? Um, in this case, uh, Ceph is not able to build a quorum anymore. That means the Ceph cluster is going out of service. So in this case, it doesn't matter what OpenStack is doing since the VMs have no a block device anymore, the next time they try to write or read, they go down. Uh, they have a failure and yeah, basically your complete cloud is lost, um, is down. And um, in this case, it's also uh, even a little bit hard to um, make fix that by hand. Uh, um, if you can't bring up the, the second core again uh, very fast, um, you should for sure somehow fix it uh, then because you want your cloud back. But um, that is a manual task uh, on the Ceph side. You need to extract the 
from all monitors the uh, all maps and need to find out which of the maps is the latest one and has the latest epoch. And then you have manually to bring up additional months. Um, or you have to bring down one. Um, but that's a manual process because you, uh, they, you, you could try to automate that, but usually uh, automation of this case would fail at the end because it would be really hard to find out which of the map states is the right one. Yeah, you have usually also the split plane case uh, where basically both sides are still running and have probably a connection from the outside and um, uh, are reachable, but the network between is failing f for multiple thinkable reasons. Uh, if a switch or is failing between them or cables or uh, maybe misconfiguration of the network to your automation or whatever, um, then you could run in a split plane situation. And what's happening here is, um, in this first case, is for sure the same as uh, before with the first case. The Ceph cluster would still decide that the site with the more months uh, is still available. Um, and in the best case scenario, uh, OpenStack would boot do it the same, depending on your setup. Um, so you would have, as in the first case, where the first site is completely out of power or failing, um, you would still have a running cloud. Um, you would have impact on performance, uh, and you maybe would lose uh, some uh, VMs, but it would basically be still working. And that would be, in a split case, uh, split brain situation, the best case scenario. Um, what happens if the site with the less months is failing um, is somehow similar to uh, the power outage situation in this case, but uh, the Ceph site would still run. And what now could happen is that um, your HA setup from OpenStack is choosing the wrong side. So currently there's no connection between usually a HA setup for OpenStack, there's no description about this problem in the HA guide um, uh, for OpenStack that you simply have the case where it's, uh, OpenStack says, oh, um, I think uh, file compartment A should st be still running and Ceph is saying B. So again, your cloud is down. Um, other things you have to take in consideration here is um, you, how to distribute uh, your replications uh, in open, uh, on the Ceph side. In this two-room setup, usually uh, it could be hard. Um, they, normally, the people run uh, and Ceph set up uh, with three replica to reach, uh, to get a high uh, reliable uh, data distribution. But two rooms and three replicas, yeah, hard to split, right? Um, um, to have it, um, if you do three replica and put one on the one side and the, uh, two on the other side, then you have always the risk that the side that has only one uh, is the remaining that you, one single failure, one failing disk could cause a massive problem uh, and would cause data, data loss possibly. Um, you would re maybe re need four replicas, uh, but that has also impact, uh, right? Reduced performance, for example, and a lot of more traffic and at the end also more cost. Um, the alternative would be to use erasure coding uh, with, open uh, with, with Ceph, but also uh, basic erasure coding would also provide a reduced performance, um, but you would uh, need less space. So you could also mitigate that with a uh, cache tiering in this case. Um, uh, you should consider that as an alternative. Um, on the other hand, um, if you have an HA setup and really think about the failing of a complete compartment, then you also need to care, take care about spare capacity because the Ceph cluster would immediately after the failure start and uh, would try to replicate and backfill everything to recover the site that's still living. So you probably need a lot of space in your storage cluster on each side uh, available to fix that. What you could do pr uh, is uh, manually reduce maybe the, um, the um, replication level for the time uh, you are running uh, in such a case. Um, but uh, you should be uh, aware what you are really doing in this case and how fast you can bring up simply your second core, maybe. Um, 
The best way to mitigate this would be to have even in your two core or have a data center with more than two cores or two file compartments, right? Um, then in this case, uh, the failure of one compartment wouldn't be a problem. Um, but uh, as very often and as uh, also with uh, tier three versus tier four, uh, it implies a lot of cost, additional costs. Um, and um, it would be uh, more resistant against such failures. Um, and you would also have a better uh, replica di distribution because you would have simply in each size one uh, re replica, but you would also have more east-west traffic on your uh, system, so you probably need to change your network setup. Um, what we are doing is um, each of our data centers we are aiming for to use um, have usually some backup rooms uh, where simply backup services are hosted. Um, Small rooms, only a few uh, servers can be hosted there. And uh, what we um, put on it is um, one part of the HA setup from Ceph, uh, from Ceph and uh, uh, from OpenStack. Uh, in this case, we host some additional mons in the third room. Um, but uh, also some of the databases from OpenStack. Um, we don't host uh, data there uh, because the rooms are not uh, large enough for that. Um, that's less con uh, cost uh, um, uh, than the uh, three cores or three file compartment cases. And um, depending on your layout and your setup, you could even simply mitigate the, um, the uh, split plane situation because you could route the traffic to over the third room if the connection between uh, room uh, one and two or file compartment A and B is failing. That uh, is, is something you could do. Um, so if we go now to the upper level again, um, up to the applications, you all know the discussion about uh, pets versus cattle. Um, in to get more um, high availability in your system, it's very important that you don't have not cloud-ready applications. Don't put cloud, not cloud-ready applications on your system. You need applications where you can kill each VM and can bring up another. The service should be able to handle that. It should be able to scale and uh, should uh, be able to have an HA setup on its own. Um, that is very critical. Um, in the um, telco world with current uh, NFV applications, that is the really the hard part. Uh, because uh, the most of the applications are not uh, are, are more pets than cattle, um, but uh, that's very essential uh, also for NFV vendors that's providing services, for example, for telcos, uh, and want them have to uh, virtualize on, for example, our cloud environment. They need to be uh, cloud ready. Otherwise, you don't need to take a lot of care about your data center because you have the problem in your software. Um, as I said, um, you need uh, failure-tolerant applications. Um, what we are doing is uh, we built this cloud uh, out of multiple backend data centers, and um, we don't spend one open stack over it, but the applications have can build their parts in different data centers. Um, and in this case, the failure of a data center should do, uh, shouldn't bring down the, the service for us. So. Um, the requirement, depending on the, the importance of the applications and uh, of the SLA of the applications, are hosted in more than one data center. Um, the issue here is that the, um, for sure, is data replication. How do you get the data from one to the other side? You can't do that with the Ceph because we don't spend the Ceph over uh, all these data centers. Um, here, the requirement would be, in general, to have store no uh, state data on an RBD. Uh, uh, or to take um, the or the application has to take care about the distribution of the data. So what we offer for applications is uh, to have uh, simply object store to store data, and um, that could be um, then um, federated over the uh, data center. So um, that would be the best way to synchronize them and uh, put the replication uh, on all these data centers. 
the issue is maybe that it's uh, not synchronous uh, for all of them, but uh, the application should be handled. Um, um, and for sure, it doesn't uh, solve the problems if you lose a database usually. Um, the other problem is that many applications don't support uh, object store right now. So my recommendation for everybody that's writing applications um, for a cloud is don't uh, use object store if you have to store data, um, if it's possible. Um, if you have a database, that's another story, then you maybe need an HA setup for your database if you can't uh, depend on it. But if you have to store uh, files or objects, then use object store. Um, that is uh, easier to handle on our side. Um, what can I give a, uh, uh, an outlook on how to uh, connect uh, OpenStack and Ceph uh, in a better way than uh, it's currently uh, done is the idea of having something uh, we call OpenStack follow storage. Um, that doesn't mean that we have to implement it in OpenStack core services. Um, it would be possible to have an HA setup uh, with OpenStack that maybe uses RBDs as a uh, fencing device to detect if the uh, RBD is still available on, on the site you uh, have your HA setup and depend on it and then choose the same site as uh, as Ceph, for example. Um, and the other idea we currently discuss in the co community, in the Ceph community, is to extend the existing uh, monitors for Ceph to include information about where the, they are physically hosted. Uh, currently, in, in the Ceph cluster, you only know the placement of the OSD, um, in fact, uh, because you have the crush map and you have your um, topology uh, um, there, but uh, you have no information where your mons are hosted. You know, you get the information which mons are still running and which are part of the Chrome and where the Chrome is, but you have no physical information, uh, except you build something, some logic on your own site and your HA setup. So we want to um, do something similar to the crash map and put information on uh, the mons uh, so that you simply from pacemaker uh, could ask the Ceph cluster which site is still running and which mons are and then you can very simply map on your setup and force uh, pacemaker to do the same for OpenStack. Um, the, now, in other discussion, as I said before, it's very hard to get an additional mon running uh, uh, if you have no Chrome, um, because you need manually to uh, shut down the monitors, uh, extract the maps, uh, inject the map in a new one, and in all the still running ones, and bring up the cluster again, so you would have a downtime. The discussion is currently to have uh, standby uh, monitors to ease that up, that you could afterwards bring uh, up in an easier way. Um, there is currently a blueprint and a discussion ongoing, and the other topic that maybe could ease it up is if you have something like a generic library or uh, a generic Chrome device where probably Ceph or OpenStack could uh, delegate the, the decision for an, uh, for an Chrome to. So that's basically the end of my talk. Um, I want to simply give a short summary. Um, OpenStack and Ceph can provide HA together and you could also reach maybe uh, five nines uh, if you um, um, plan it very carefully, if you have multiple data center, because if one data center has less than five nines, you also have five nines, uh, less than five nines simply. Uh, if you have multiple, you can uh, get higher numbers. Um, you need to be aware of the failure scenarios you have. Um, you maybe think that these scenarios don't happen uh, very often. Uh, that's probably true, but for sure, sooner or later they happen. That, that, that's the only question when. Um, so um, you need to make sure that all your possible quorum decisions are in sync um, to get this running. And I would recommend, or it should be recommended to use a third room. Uh, if it's uh, really a uh, third core, or if it's simply, as in our case, a room where you host additional services, that is required to get uh, your single uh, OpenStack Ceph cloud uh, um, running uh, in an HA setup. And you need to, as I said, um, take care of the data replication and the spare capacity in your uh, Ceph cluster. 
and we will extend CEF to provide more information on that. And the um, target for five nines is, in our case, uh, is end-to-end uh, -end and not uh, the availability of the data center or the cloud in, in one data center. And um, since that is very expensive on the data center level, for that, no pets, right? Um, and the distribution of your services about, uh, over multiple data center. So, the last one, um, get involved. Um, if you want to help, you know all the OpenStack parts here, some more information how you can also work on the Ceph community. Um, there are some ways we have uh, mailing lists, uh, we have uh, IRC, and also we have, uh, for example, the Open, the, uh, open Ceph Developer Summit where you can engage us and can uh, uh, submit blueprints to, we can discuss together. So you are invited, we would be really happy. Questions? Can somebody get the... Have you considered using uh, or having set to do hosting forums or having like the resource agent push that forum into the that would avoid... Uh, you mean forcing Ceph to the site, uh, to take another site? Yeah, basically that's not possible, right? I mean, you can't force Ceph to, from the outside because if you have only two months left or one month left on one side, you can't force anything uh, because it's right. not enough. You can adjust what Ceph, the number of nodes in Ceph and the things it needs to have forms, potentially. But the better way would be to have everyone consuming the same forum. Yeah, that would be the so easier way. Yeah. yeah. Currently, it's, yeah, I would consider it as not possible to force Ceph in one side. No. No. Yeah. Yeah, so you were talking about uh, the couple of things in there, and I can probably help you uh, because I wrote the Goro module in policy. Uh, there is a library that is shared that you can use to pull uh, into information to get okay. the data from Ceph. Uh, and uh, you were talking about external entities to provide forum, uh, and then when you come to have the next six months uh, about the first site team layer to push information about. Okay. Great. So I have the uh, question about you talk about uh, uh, replicating the data to the search engine location using the object storage. Yeah. Are you suggesting application to move away from block storage to object storage? Yeah. Okay. That would be suggesting. Yeah. What? Well, uh, uh, for us, it's the same if the application takes care about distributing that over the m different uh, locations on their own. That is for us also fine. But in general, if you the application don't want to take any uh, care about it, then it should use Object Store. Have you tried or considered the approach of cloud computing running through Object? Sorry. To uh, cloud computing running, I mean, uh, RPC running. No, we don't want to do that. Okay. So, that so in our setup, it's not. Um, an idea. Yeah. I do suggest a topic, first rule. And is it possible that we can do that first rule in the public cloud? Uh, um, that highly depends on f two things. Your security, in our case, no, never ever. <laughs> I mean, that is part of the Ceph cluster and uh, of the HA setup, and I don't want to have that in a public cloud. I mean, we have a very strict security department for some very good reasons and we wouldn't do it, but you could maybe do it, but it, in this case it would highly depend also on the uh, latency and the distance and... Yeah, you, you probably could do it. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't do it. Yeah, then, then, yeah, 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 sure. The, you can't reach that if you take the applications out of the calculation. So you can only reach it if the have multiple data center and the application is really aware that it should distribute over it and uh, is aware that it uh, needs to be 
distributed and HA over that. Then if you don't have that, then you can't reach it without a lot, lot, lot of money uh, because tier four is not enough. If you, in this case, in, in the setup as showed, the latency doesn't matter because all, all is in one data center, right? I mean, if you put it on the public cloud, I don't have a number, but latency could be an issue. Okay, but in case we are talking about multi-site, you have to have a very bad bandwidth. In this case, I think it's more possible, I guess. In this case? Assume there are two data centers. Yeah. If you have everything in one, uh, uh, sorry, I, maybe I didn't get it right, but if you have everything in one core and everything is physically on one site, on one place, one city, whatever, um, then it shouldn't be a problem. But if the distance between data centers is too high, then you could probably run in issues. I mean, 20 kilometers is maybe okay, but over that, I would say, depending on your network, the latency could get too long. Oh, we had in such case, right? So, <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, even if you play with a, you have for sure uh, impact on uh, on performance. You need to be aware of that if you take a look on one single data center, because all the data application, and you need to bring up additional uh, uh, VMs for, for the applications uh, at have. Uh, impact on uh, performance, but uh, it would s still be running, right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, you need to do that, right. It also depends on how full is your cloud and if uh, you have even enough compute power on the, on the site left, so you need to plan very carefully to on not only spare uh, storage, uh, also spare compute if you take a look on only the one data center. And also if you take a look on the complete data center set in this case, I mean, you have need to have enough space left and enough resources left to host uh, your services. Okay. Thank you. The people. Yeah, yeah that's, I mean, uh, bringing, uh, in general, bringing uh, traditional telco services from the usual black boxes you get from a vendor to using an open stack cloud uh, and uh, get rid of the um, uh, vendor lock-in uh, uh, usually requires a lot of changes in your uh, organization and that is probably the other biggest uh, work you have to do. You need people that are interested to change and uh, to be open to the change uh, from black boxes to a real cloud. Yeah, that is a lot of work. Okay, thank you.